So this is Baruch here. I'm at the Tikkun Elevator Kolel, and this is the Shear. We're doing on the Parsha of the week. This today is the 24th day of the month of Tevis. This is the month of Capricorn, the darkest time of the year. It's a time where we really start to magnify our hope because we're kind of really sunk in this dark, cold, dark place. Let's come over here and take a look at the Zohar for the week of the Zohar is here on Parsha's Be'era. And we're going to pick up the Zohar over here on this page. Now, what's going on in here, if you ever wonder, those of you who listen into the Shior, uh, these are snippets of the Parsha because the Parsha is quite long. We don't have enough time in the day to be able to go through all the parts of it, but we can listen to some of the words of the Holy Zohar, the words of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. The Zohar says over here on page Reish Lamed Hey, it says, Tolchazi, come and see Arba Dehoidemina. There are four special lights, four lights. Plas Benaitustim, and three of them are closed. Vachad de Dizgali, and one, though, is revealed. The Hora de Nohir, the light that shines. The Hora de Zahara, a light that, I guess this is the word, uh, shines again. The Zihura, so he has one, the Nohir. Then he has a nor, the, uh, the Zihra, another one, this is the Zohar, shining. Vihu Nahar Gadzihira, the Shem, uh, uh, the Shemaya, the Daku. This is like a light that shines from the heavens or in the heavens in a very pure state. The Hora of Argabanda, the Nadu, called Nahar, and then there's a light which is purple. And that light, that light absorbs all of the other, the other light. So the light, which does not shine, it, it looks at those that are shining, and it takes them. And then you could see these lights in it, in the one that does not shine. So he says, Ashisha, and I looked it up, the word Ashisha is... Uh, First of all, lamp, but here he's going to say that it's like a reflecting, uh, like a mirror, like a reflecting mirror, not exactly a mirror, the Kabel Shimshon that you put the sun next to it and reflect. Meaning, Plastika Amen Steaming, so those three that we said that they're closed up, the Kaim and Al Hide is Galia, and they really stand over the one that's revealed. Razada Aina, that the secret of all of this is the eyes, is in the eyes. Now, I'm going to get a deeper secret about anatomy. Uh, let's come over here and look at the Matuk Medvash, and this is what we use in order to be able to understand all the words of the Zohar. What the Matuk Medvash was, and I said before in other Shiurim, that this man, Rabbi Daniel Frisch, a Holocaust survivor who really survived in, miraculously, dedicated his life to the study of, of, of Zohar, he came from a place in Hungary where it was common for people to study mysticism. <clears throat> At any rate, he spent a great deal of his life in Meiron and meeting all of the great rabbis that would come and asking them questions and learning and spending his whole life devoted to this Pirush that we have here. He says, he says like this, and let me bring it down a little bit. We can see it maybe a little bit better. He says, uh, Ray, come and see. Yesh arba oros shehem so dalut osius yud ke bavke shevazer anpin. Azer anpin represents the manifestation of the holy name. That's where the name is ultimately manifest. It comes from way, way up higher. That is very close to the Aids of Barucho. But it comes down through us and is seen in Zer anpin. That's what he's saying. It manifests in Zer anpin. Shemehem meirin dalut mini an hogos alatachtainim. That from these four letters, Four different types of ways that the world is run, and that that in relationship to us, he says mehem heim osius yaku. So these three letters are the letters yud k and vav, or the yud k vav k, heim stumos. But these letters are closed up. Mechasavas ayin kol navi. So they're higher level. They're at a higher level than no pro, no prophet. You have to understand what the prophets are able to actually be able to do. Is that they were able to reach the Nenetzach and Hod of, uh, of Olam Atzilus. It's just really beyond imagination. He says, or, or that's what it sounds like at any rate. Ba'achaz mehem shuhu he'ach, rather than one of them, which is the final he, he niglis, it's revealed. 
the farish has Paulus Gimel Oris Edel the Armor Harishon. So now he wants to describe the Zohar Rebbe Shimon wants to describe the actual actions that take place that these three lights uh, contribute. Who or Yud the Chavaya? This is the light that comes to the Yud of the Yud Kevavke. True Hachokma for Hachesed and it's Pashet Lamata the Hagav is So it's the right line. The right line consists of of uh, Hachma. Chesed, and then ultimately Netzah. So that's called Chachan in, in, by Kabbalists. So he says, mm-hmm. And the constant will be pouring light on them. And he says, Because of the tremendous amount of these Chesedim, which are the, the kindnesses, Shal Chesed, Poshet, Yad, the Noisin, uh, base, uh, be, uh, be, the, the nice. So they, uh, this way he wants to say, because of a tremendous of amount of chesed there, he's a proposed yada the nice. He extends his out, his hands out, his right line, and gives. So the idea of chesed is the idea of giving. Un, unstoppable, uh, or what's the right word? Unrequited uh, uh, giving. Just keeps going. Now the next one he says base number base or hey Rishona, that's the light of the first hey of the Yud Kev of Vavke Shuhu Habina. It's also called Baga. So it's called Habina. And he just mentions the first two, which is Bina and Gabura, because he's saying it's not Mispashet at this point. Lamata, which is going to stand down below into Hod. And they shine. Like the shining of the heaven in its purity. Now the Matan Vidavas wants to explain that. He said, Lomar, Hagam Shehem Boor Shel Hagavura. Now we understand that Bina and Gavura are are there are dinim in about Bina. It says that Dinim mis uh mina. So that she's actually the awakener of Dinim, and the Dinim are manifest once again in Gavura. Shel Gavur Reboy uh uh, uh, so he said, let me read again. So there's a lot to it. Uh, don't just think that because of the fact that there's a lot of negative light, that is the light of Dinim there, that's automatically a place where the Kitsonim, in other words, the, the accusers and uh, those forms which are attempting to steer us away from Torah. He says, Chatzur Shalom, Elohu Tahor. So that's why he says the word Tahor. I'm sorry, I'm missing the place a little bit. So he said, the Tahor, Min Kitsonim, Kazoah Hashem of the Tahor. So that at this point, we're saying that this, this Gevura is 100% pure. It's a pure light of the Eitz of Baruch Hu, manifest down the left line, which is the line of Den. Number Gimel, number Gimel, the third light. He says, it's the Nahor of the Argaman. So he said, let me figure where it goes. Or Vav, this is the light of the letter Vav of the Yud K Vav K, Vuhu Begavon Argaman, and it's purple. Shuhu so the Teferis, which is this constant of Teferis. What is Teferis? Teferis ha kolo kol oros havok. The Teferis has within it and combines within itself all the lights of the Vav Gitzbos as their Anpin, which are called Ches and Gavur Teferis, and that's a whole new soul. Now the Hora, uh, so then you have the Dawid, number Dawid, the fourth one. The fourth one, he says, let me find a place. He says, Or He Achrona. That's the light of Malchus. Shuhu Or She'enen Meir the Fisha. It's a light, and at the mo- any moment is not shining. Although Behi Yosef of Misyachedes in Zeranpin, but because she combines herself with Zeranpin, Meirika Malchus, she winds up shining just like him. Now, what we're saying is that this is the concept that the Zohar talks about is the mating of opposite forces, the mating of the male force and the male of the f- mating of the female force, which work di- differently. But he also misyachanim zer anpen me'ira komohos. So when she's able to have zer anpen within her and combine with her, then she shines just like him. So in other words, he mentioned to Ferris all over or earlier, that's another way for zer anpen. Now, this is an important idea. He says this light, the light of Malchus, which is really an empty light, and it has light within it only because of the relationship with Zeranpin, 
ואור זה רבי סטנקו קרואה בהגימו אורוס חגת וכל אורסה. So she looks upwards, she is reaching upwards, looking upwards to the other three lights which are called Chagat, Chesed Gevorah Teferis, Bekol Arosam, and she incorporates them within herself. So, Venir, Venirayim, Elo Hagimu, Oros, the Chagat, and now you see the appearance of these three lights which are called Chagat, but Malchus, Kamosh, Ashashis, Kenegad Hashem, is just like you see them, just like Ashashis, so in this case it means like a mirror that you shine towards the sun. Or uh, uh, some kind of an absorbent metal, he says. But so no What is that? Who luch matechos? So he says that this is a board, or made out of metal, or flat, please. A mavrik, which is which is a mavrik. The hashemish nirabok ayin mares. So it it, it it's mavrik. It it shines backwards, and the hashemis can be seen in it like a, a vision. So he said, in other words, it's not the the sun, but you could see it there. Cain Nirayan but Malchus, this is the same way that the lights of the Haggad appear in Malchus. She he so the Ashashis. She's the concept of this absorbing metal which which absorbs the light from up above. So he says the Ashis Haroshal Haggad the Zah Nikro Shemesh. And so that therefore it's the Ashashis which reflects the light of the of the sun. So he says these two lights of the Yashashis, uh, uh, and he says, that, excuse me, uh, yaku, so that's yud, yud is the right line, uh, K is the left line, the Vav is the middle line. They're, they're closed up in their place in Chagat. And here comes the punchline, which is a very important idea for us to understand. And she, they're standing up above her, and they're shining on the Malchus, which is uh, which is now revealed. He says, what, what did you just say? He says, well, it's all alone. It means to say like this. What adorns Malchus? Malchus, which is empty. How does she become adorned? How does she become beautiful for her husband, Zeranthu? So because of the Masim Tovim Shalatahtaim. Bolumba Basod Man. And this is a critical uh, uh important idea in, in Kabbalah is the concept of Mayim Nukvim is bringing from the bottom your prayers from the bottom, your desires from the bottom for Kedusha on the top. And what does she do? She if she those desires that she has, she elevates them, they're called Mayim Nukvim, the Hagat to the Chesed Gaborah to Paris. And then what happens then? Then the, what happens is the light that is in the Chagat begins to shine on her, but it has to start from her. So he, he says, the, the, the Zohar said, As we explain, as we go on. This is Baruch Fleischmann, Tikkun Elevator, Kolel.